Thanks. Morning, everyone. Um, it's lovely to be with you. First thing to say is that uh, if you got Tim's email, the verse we're looking at this morning was not right. I'm sure that was my fault for missing out a number. Uh, so we're looking at uh, Romans 15 verses 5 and 6 um, this morning. Um, let me begin by uh, praying. Father, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for your goodness to us, for the opportunity to gather in this way and to spend a few minutes looking at your word together, focusing on you, lifting our eyes to Jesus. Will you speak to us this morning by your spirit, we pray. Amen. So one writer said uh, this about the church, not our church, but the church. The quality of our unity either attracts or repels the world. And it got me thinking about the family of God worldwide and particularly about us as the family of God at St. Swithin's. And there seems to be at times so much unity, disunity across the Christian church, so much pain and brokenness and hurt. So many churches you hear stories of being split or complaining or just struggling day by day to get along. So how united are we as a church family? And when people hear of St Swithin's or visit St Swithin's or, or meet members of St Swithin's, are they struck by our unity and our love for one another and for God? Are we attracting others, not to ourselves, but pointing them to Christ? Right back in to the early church, there have been some brilliant successes regarding unity within God's church, but also some miserable failures. In his letter to the Romans, Paul spends a good couple of chapters addressing the issue of disunity amongst that church. As Jewish and Gentile Christians struggle to live alongside one another, their different backgrounds and traditions, opinions and struggles raise their heads. And then instead of living in harmony together, they judge one another. So one of Paul's reasons for writing his letters was to address these differences and remind them of the centrality of Christ's death and resurrection. He longs for them not to be distracted by other issues, but to be united in Christ and in the gospel alone. So in chapter 15, verse 5 and, and 6, he prays this. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other. Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I think Paul's basic prayer for them is this, let Christ be your example in the way you treat each other and together be unified in worship and you'll bring glory to God. So firstly if we want to be a unified church then Christ must be our example. Let's remind ourselves for a minute of that attitude of Christ. Philippians 2 uh, tells us everything we need to know. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. The Lord Jesus never put himself first or pleased himself. He put aside or emptied himself of all his glory and the rights of his kingship to take up the position of the most humbled servant, even to the point of dying a criminal's death, a torturous death on a cross. Why? because of his love for us, because it was the only way to save us. The only way to reconcile us to God and give us hope for eternity as his forgiven people. Never did he make decisions for his own benefit, to ease his own pain, to bring himself satisfaction. He was obedient to his father and deliberately willing to do as he had been called to do. If we're to be unified as a church, then we must seek to be like Christ. Not be concerned with pleasing ourselves, but 
being concerned for others. Love others to the point of self-sacrifice. Love others when it means we don't really benefit. Love others when what we do is unnoticed. And love others when we can't have what we want so that others may have what they want or need. Love to please others and not ourselves. That way we will be a church that's united even in our diversity. And of course it doesn't mean that we will or have to agree on everything, but it does mean we don't fight for our corner and demand our rights. Instead, we uh, disagree lovingly on those lesser things, but are of one mind about what is most important. Becoming, as Paul says right, right at the beginning of his letter, unashamed of the gospel, because it's the power of God to bring salvation to everyone who believes. The beautiful good news of Jesus unites us as the church. It's the gospel that should fill, as this verse says, fill our minds and be lived out in our lives, affecting everything we believe, trust, think and do. When we regard one another with minds that are filled with and focused on the Lord, we will consider our actions and we will deny ourselves, put others first. In that way, the quality of our unity will attract the world, not to us, but to the Lord Jesus. Secondly, when we are a unified church, we'll be unified in our worship and bring glory to God. Our praise is gonna be poor if it comes from a place of stubbornness and lack of love for one another. But when we are of one mind, focused on Jesus, then with one voice, we will worship in spirit and truth and bring glory to God and the Father, to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And our worship then will be as it's meant to be. I miss corporate worship, musical worship, and I, as many of you, will find it hard that we can't sing together. But let's remember that our worship goes beyond song. Of course, by singing his praise on Zoom or together again, we'll bring him glory. But by using our voices to build each other up in love and unity, we also bring him glory. By using our words to encourage and urge one another on in our faith, we bring him glory. By sharing testimony of his goodness or praying for him to be at work in each other's lives, we bring him glory. By sharing the gospel with others, with people in our community, serving them, we bring him glory. We can use our words in so many ways to worship God. When we're united in our love of Christ, we bring him glory with true selfless integrity. When I hear and listen to worship music and hear the wonderful harmonies of different voices as they praise together, blending beautifully, I'm moved. As we unite together and as we focus on Christ with both our minds and our hearts and our voices, a wonderful multi-layered harmony of worship fills the throne room of God and brings him glory. And that wonderful sound will attract others, not to us, but to the Lord Jesus. And so as we finish, I want to return to the question I began with, how united are we at St. Swithin? Does the quality of our um, unity attract others to Christ or repel the world? It's really challenging, isn't it? But it's also really exciting because there is joy in loving one another, in serving one another, in offering ourselves humbly to the service of others and to building one another as Christians. There is joy in seeing others flying for God and growing more in love with Jesus and wanting to serve him as a consequence. There is joy in all aspects of worship that is wholly focused on Christ. And we could do all these things, whether we're doing them on Zoom and in lockdown or whether as lockdown releases, there will become more opportunities to do them in person and to encourage one another in person. I've been at St. Swithin's a year and it has made my heart sing when new arrivals have been welcomed at St. Swithin's and have said how they feel that the church is one big family. That is really good news. We're on the way. But of course, there is a whole city out there that we long to know Christ. Let's pray for unity. 
that we would be united in mind and in voice with that same selfless attitude of Christ and see what God will do through us. Let's pray together. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Father God, would you help us to be a church that is united in our difference, loving in our diversity, and willing above all things to serve Christ and each other and our community around us selflessly and graciously. Please unite us. May we bring you worship with love and integrity that honours you and brings you glory in every way. Thank you that you do delight in us and rejoice in our perseverance with you. Encourage us as we seek to encourage each other and remind us daily of the good news of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.